Hello and welcome to Neurosurgery at Written Board Crash Course. My name is Chen and we'll cover the rest of the cranial synostosis in this video. Last time we went over the sagittal synostosis and the coronal synostosis. Recall that the unilateral coronal synostosis causes a disease called anterior plagiocephaly. And we mentioned that there is another entity called posterior plagial cephaly that is caused by the lambdoid synostosis. When you have a fused lambdoid suture on one side, this causes an ipsilateral occipital parietal flattening and compensatory contralateral frontal bossing and contralateral parietal bossing because of the compensatory growths. The ipsilateral ear is displaced posteriorly because of the lack of growth on the ipsilateral side. And this causes the posterior plagiocephaly to have its characteristic skewed appearance. And it's named posterior because of the fused suture is on the posterior side other than the coronal suture. And this disease needs to be differentiated from another entity called positional plagiocephaly, or also known as the deformational plagiocephaly. This entity is caused by the baby laying on one side too often. And because the baby's skull is more malleable, the skull will take on a different shape than the symmetric ones. The plagiocephaly will usually cause kind of a parallelogram shape with unilateral flattening of the occiput, ipsilateral frontal bossing, and anterior displacement of the ipsilateral ear. And so just by looking at the infant, it is quite easy to get them confused. But there are a few major differences to tell them apart, and it's predominantly by both history and morphology. The true synostosis present at birth and positional plagiocephaly is not. Morphologically, there are two distinctive features. The ear displacement and the unilateral synostosis is posteriorly displaced versus an anteriorly displaced for the positional plagiocephaly. In addition, the lambdoid synostosis will have a tilted cranial base with a prominent ipsilateral mastoid process versus a straight cranial base in the, in the case of the positional palatial cephaly. And the importance of the distinction between the two entities is because their treatment modality is different. The treatment for lambdoid synostosis is surgery, and the treatment for positional palatial cephaly is usually conservative with positional therapy or molding helmets. Here's a summary of the different types of plagial cephaly listed in the table below. And make sure you know their differences because quite commonly the board exam will ask you to identify the types of the cranial synostosis. The metopic suture is located right here and it may fuse as early as three months of age and should fuse in nearly all patients by about nine months of age. If this suture is fused prematurely it will cause the skull to take on a form of a very pointed almost triangular shape to the front and top of their skull and eyes that appear too close together. And hence, this synostosis is, causes a 
what we know as the trigonal cephaly for its triangular shape. When you have more than one suture fused, what you get is a compound cranial synostosis. Obviously, when you have more than one suture fused, the disease entity cannot be known by the fused suture, but rather by the shape of skull. And hence, you get disease entities like turricephaly or oxycephaly. Now, turricephaly is named so because turi means Greek, means tower in Greek. And it typically involves both coronal plus another one, usually sphenofrontal synostosis, and hence giving this, the head a more towering or tall appearance. The oxycephaly, his name is as such because oxy means sharp or cone-shaped in Greek. The top of the skull is usually pointed or conical, secondary to premature closure of coronal suture plus any other suture. And you can see as a result that the, the two entities, turicephaly and oxycephaly are essentially largely the same. And we'll go over these two, the Klebestadl syndrome and the copper beaten skull in a little more detail. The Klebestadl syndrome is also known as the cloverleaf deformity, which is an extremely rare skull deformity, and it causes the bulging at the front and side of the skull resembling a cloverleaf shape. There are inconsistent patterns of suture fusion that has been reported, but the coronal and lambdoid sutures are most often involved. A copper beaten skull appearance is not a cranial synostosis by its own, but rather the result of it. When you have a severe cranial synostosis, such as a pan synostosis, the cranial space is reduced, and this causes the brain volume to exceed the cranium size, resulting in a raised intracranial pressure. And consequently, the growing brain exerts a continuous pulsatile pressure on the malleable cranium, producing a gyral pattern evidenced on a plain skull x-ray. And this is most commonly known as the copper beaten skull appearance. And this is the least common manifestation of cranial synostosis on a developing skull. Now this disease entity is not the same as another one called Leukenstadl skull or lacunar skull. The lacunar skull is caused by abnormal collagen development and is an ossification disorder in which the fetal skull appears fenestrated with multiple oval lucencies separated by dense bony ridges on the x-ray, and hence their similarities to the copper beaten skull. Now these lacunar skulls are usually present at birth and is almost always associated with Chiari II malformations. The lacunar skull has a good prognosis, unlike the copper beaten skull, because the lacunar skulls typically resolve spontaneously by the age of six months. This is the end of the cranial synostosis video. And make sure you can recognize and identify the types of cranial synostosis if they give you either a description of it or a picture of it. And I hope you find this helpful, and we'll see you next time.